With the Lucky Land Slots, you can get lucky just about anywhere. This is your captain speaking. Uh, we've got clear runway and the weather's fine, but we're just going to circle up here a while and uh, get lucky. No, no, nothing like that. It's just these cash prizes add up quick. So I suggest you sit back, keep your tray table upright, and start getting lucky. Play for free at LuckyLandsLots.com. Are you feeling lucky? No purchase necessary. Void where prohibited by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details. Welcome to the Eric Erickson Show podcast. Hour three. Hello, America. Welcome. It's Eric Erickson here across the United States of America. The phone number is 877-973-7425. If you want to be on the program, I got to give Philip some credit here because he found a sanitized version. So it's not the full thing. So I got to set the stage for you with what's happening. I've mentioned Leroy Jenkins now two days in a row. I got to. Okay. So. This is a an online recording of a live stream of a group of guys playing uh, World of Warcraft, which is an online game where it's like Dungeons and Dragons and you kill orcs and monsters and bad guys. And so what's happened here to set the scene is these guys have tried to enter this cave for quite some time to kill bad guys. And every time they do it, they wind up getting killed. So they've decided they need to regroup and come up with a strategy. And it is, it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 guys, 12 guys. One of the guys is named Leroy Jenkins. And Leroy announces to the group, and this is this, you're about to hear the, the return of Leroy Jenkins here. Leroy Jenkins announces to the group, guys, I'll be right back. I got to go to the bathroom, grab some water, grab something to drink. I'll be right back. So these guys have now begun to plot. Some are kind of going to go in this way. Some are coming this way. Some are going to be a distraction. Some are going to lay in wait. Some are going to make a trap. Some are going to do this. Some are going to do that. And they put together now. This goes on for about five minutes while Leroy's in the bathroom and grabbing something to drink. So now they've almost got their plan together. And Leroy Jenkins has rejoined the chat, oblivious to all of the planning the guys have done. And Leroy decides it's time for action. It's a lot better than we usually do. Uh, all right, thumbs up. Ready, guys? Let's or- do this. Leroy Jenkins! Oh, my God, he just ran in. Save him. Oh, gee, stick and clean. Oh, gee. <laughs> <Leroy> Jenkins. <laughs> oh, my God. He just ran in. Stick to the plan. Stick to the plan. And they all die. That's, my friends, is Matt Gates, except Matt Gates has more collateral fallout than Nero Jenkins. <laughs> just classic internet meme. I'm sorry if you don't find it hilarious. I can't play you the full five minutes because of the profanity in it. But, I mean, these guys could cock this elaborate plan while Leroy's in the bathroom. And then he just shows up and now it's called Leroy Jenkins. It That's what he does. <laughs> so good. Thank you, Philip, for finding that 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 sanitized clip of, of the cl- – <laughs> Oh, Wow. All right, the phone number here, it is the Eric Erickson Show, 877-973-7425, 877-Leroy Jenkins. <laughs> Y'all, we need to talk about blindness. Moving from one topic to another serious topic. Um, it's actually a very interesting piece today. I have explained to you the insanity of postmodern thinking. In fact, we spent a lot of time on it yesterday. The intersectional insanity. Intersectionalism, for those of you who are new to it, who aren't familiar with it, is the power dynamics of the world are placed on an intersectional grid. So if you are white, male, heterosexual, 
cisgendered, that is your gender and sex align, uh, you're Christian and you have no disability, you are the most privileged person on the planet. And if you are none of those things, you are the most oppressed on the planet. And the way postmodern theory works is they argue that those who are the most oppressed have the greatest morality and moral claims. And that those who are of the oppressor class, the privileged class, must be silent. You got that? So it's 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 your race, your sexual orientation, your gender, your religion, your creed, your lack of disability, all those things make you oppressive and privileged. So if you're white, male, heterosexual, cisgendered, Christian with no disability, you are the most oppressive person on the planet. If you are black, female, transgendered, lesbian, amputee, who's Muslim and blind, you are the most oppressed and therefore everyone must bow before you and listen. Well, there lies a problem. Do you see it? Maybe you don't. <laughs> Pun intended. What if you're blind and we could cure your blindness? You see, you have a disability. That disability gives you a moral claim against those who are not disabled. So for you to get rid of your disability would be to get rid of your moral claim, and therefore it might be bad, it might be wrong to get rid of your disability. This is from the Free Press. Dr. Jeff Levinson first noticed the problem back in 2009 when he was biking to work in the dark hours of the morning. The glare from the headlights of approaching cars dazzled his eyes to the points he couldn't see. A few weeks later, he looked across the kitchen table to glance at his wife, who was six feet away, and he could only make out her shadow. Levinson, an ophthalmologist with a busy schedule in Jacksonville, Florida, knew there was something wrong. He was going blind. He knew it was likely cataracts, which could be fixed with a simple surgery. One month and two 15-minute surgeries on each of his eyes later, he returned to his backyard reborn. The experience changed the trajectory of his life. He started reading about how people around the world had cataracts, 100 million, 17 million of whom had gone completely blind. Levinson wanted to give the gift of sight, and he wanted to give it to as many people as possible. But cataract surgery in the United States costs between three and $5,000 per eye without insurance, mostly because the procedure relies on a heavily specialized device that vibrates at 40,000 times a second through a tiny two and a half millimeter incision in the eyes, the device swiftly sucks out the cataract, leaving space for the surgeon to insert a brand new man-made lens. Four months after his own surgery, Levinson hopped on a plane to Honduras to meet a doctor who trained him how to do the surgery and then set out to travel around the developed world and making the surgery accessible to anyone using the surgery called manual small incision cataract surgery, which costs less than $20 with virtually the same outcomes. Last September, Levinson received an intriguing, if baffling, phone call. Someone named Mr. Beast, who was something of a YouTube phenomenon, heard about Levinson's work and wanted to pay for a 1,000 people to have cataract surgery. Six years ago, an 18-year-old named Jimmy Donaldson, who went online by the name Mr. Beast, made a video in which the babyface performer sat in his bedroom and counted to 100,000 for 40 hours. It went viral. Six months later, he gave a homeless man $100,000, launching his trademark stunt philanthropy. Nell Donaldson has 201 million subscribers, the second largest number on YouTube. Three weeks after Levinson received a phone call, Donaldson showed up in the doctor's waiting room with a 30-member crew. The final product, an eight-minute long video released January 28th of this year, titled A Thousand Blind People See for the First Time. It begins with Donaldson surrounded by a cheering crowd declaring that he's curing a thousand people's blindness. Patients like Jim Yappel, a 64-year-old who had gone blind in both eyes, are shown in a surgical chair in Levinson's office in Jacksonville, Florida. Levinson slowly peels the white gauze from their eyes as the camera braces for their reaction. Sheesh, Yappel explained. That's my watch. I've never seen it before. One patient burst into tears after regaining his sight. 
Some are presented briefcases filled with $10,000. Donaldson gave one young man a brand new Tesla after a lifetime of blindness so he can finally learn to drive. At the end of the video, the screen turns black and white text appears stating, I wonder if we'll get a thousand more views from the people we cured, LOL. Well, guess what? The Wokes are upset. Some of them are upset with Donaldson using his money and, and uh, paying for these people because it helps his brand. It helps him make money. It helps drive his traffic. But a lot of the people are upset because it's taking away their superpower. What is their superpower? Blindness. That's right. Blindness. The National Institutes of Health, the $40 billion endowed funding arm of the Department of Health and Human Services, recently took a stand against ableism by proposing a change in its mission statement, which promises to enhance health, lengthen life, and reduce illness and disability. The advisory wants to delete the phrase reduce disability. The NIH, which markets itself as the largest single public funder of biomedical and behavioral research in the world, proposes getting rid of any statement related to getting rid of disability because disabilities give people moral claims and superpowers. And so maybe they shouldn't get rid of people's blindness. The deaf community is in the same group. There are activists within the deaf community that believe restoring someone's hearing destroys their moral truth claims. And they don't want you to get rid of this. This is a mental illness spreading through this country. As both hearing and deaf parents contemplated a new procedure for their deaf children, accusations of child abuse have been lobbed about. Some activists against a new technology, the cochlear implant, that can restore hearing to people, view it as a form of oppression and potential ethnocide through erasure of deaf culture. That's right. They think that you shouldn't be able to get rid of deafness and you shouldn't be able to get rid of blindness. You shouldn't be able to cure people of their disabilities. And these people and some of the groups, they bought into intersectionality and they become convinced that it's bad to get rid of people's blindness and it's bad to get rid of people's uh, deafness. I mean, these people would cancel Jesus. Jesus made it so the lame could walk and the blind could see. He'd be canceled by current woke culture. How dare you take away their blindness, Jesus? We're going to put you on a cross and kill you. He's like, ha ha, make my day. This is insanity at deep levels, but this is what happens with the embrace of postmodernism. This is the embrace of postmodern intersectionality. We see it with the situation in Israel where the Israelis who are oppressed and persecuted, Jews around the world exterminated by others, that somehow they can be cast as the oppressor because the color of their skin is lighter than the color of the Palestinian skin. Therefore, the lighter skin is always the oppressor according to the intersectional scale. Therefore, they're the bad guys here, even though they're not the ones who ruthlessly murdered a bunch of people. There's some breaking news regarding this. One of the one of the captives Hamas took was a girl with autism and her grandmother. This young lady uh, was last seen in a picture. She had a Harry Potter holding a Harry Potter book and a wand. Her body and her grandmother's body have been dumped on the side of the road. They've been executed by Hamas. They were hostages. They've been executed. And yet. Progressive, woke intersectionalists would say this girl and her grandmother are the oppressors. And they would say that Jimmy Donaldson, Mr. Beast, by getting rid of people's blindness, he's an oppressor and he's destroying their moral truth claims. This reminds me of that old bishop of the Episcopal Church who claimed that the Apostle Paul, by driving demons out of a girl, was abusing her because he didn't ask her consent to drive the demons out of her. The demons were her superpower. And by driving the demons out of her, he had deprived her of income and, and had physically harmed her by driving the demons out of her. This was this was the presiding bishop, Christy Jeff, Jeffers or whatever her name was, 
Christina Jeff, she she claimed that the Apostle Paul driving a demon out was actually bad. This is where the woke skits you. Jesus said he can make the blind or the blind see and the lame walk. He would be canceled by the wokes today. That's the insanity we're in. Yes, you can look at it one way. It's demonic. Hello and welcome. It is Eric Erickson here across the nation. The phone number 877-973-7425. Those of you on the phone, stand by because I went long in the last segment and I don't have a ton of time here um, before I have to get into ads and commercial break. But I do want to bring you the latest. Uh, Outside observers have now been able to get to the hospital in Gaza that Israel supposedly blew up. And guess what? It's still there. It wasn't blown up. Uh, Naftali Bennett was on CNN. Listen to this. I do also want to talk about this uh, floating the the narratives or the claims. Uh, There are no two sides to this hospital. Either it was bombed by Israel or it was uh, targeted by someone else on the Palestinian side. And, you know, if it's if two people come and say one says it's raining outside and the other says it's dry, you don't bring the quotes of both sides. You just open the the window and look whether it's raining or not. Uh, That's what we did. And this uh, hospital, in fact, it's a parking lot, was uh, hit definitely 100% by Islamic Jihad barrage, uh, shot fired at the 6.59 p.m. We have three different videos from different angles showing it. We have the ballistics. We know that uh, an Israeli bomb would have created a cater, crater which does not exist we know that the propellant in the rocket uh, because it was a long-term rocket uh, targeted for israel uh, so a lot of uh of, of that propellant was still in the rocket which created a lot of fire we have two hamasniks talking to each other and saying and admitting that it is from uh islamic jihad so anderson with all due respect there aren't two sides to this not everything is two sides and i have a feeling that if it wasn't the state of Israel, then I think the global media would have behaved very differently. Amen to that. Absolutely right and well said. Now, let me tell you about Stamps.com. All you need is a computer and a printer to use Stamps.com. You manage orders on the go with a mobile app. You schedule package pickup. You seamlessly connect to every major marketplace and shopping cart. You get huge carrier discounts up to 84% off post office and UPS rates. You automatically find the cheapest and the fastest shipping options with stamps.com. I know this to be true because I'm a longtime user. In fact, I got a package ready to go today, waiting for UPS to pick it up. I literally was able to schedule pickup at my office. I don't even have to go stand in line. They just show up. You get access to the UPS and post office services you need anytime, day or night, and you can get supplies from stamps.com as well. Over a million businesses, including mine, use stamps.com. And by the way, I, I'm I'm a longtime customer. I'm not doing this because they're an advertiser. I've been using stamps.com for 20 of their 25 years. Sign up today with code ERIC for a special offer. It includes a four-week trial, free postage, a free digital scale. There's no long-term commitment, no contract. Stamps.com, click the microphone, put in my name, ERIC, E-R-I-C-K. Start saving and shipping today. We got breaking news to deal with here on the Eric Erickson Show. Welcome back. The phone number 877-973-7425. The deal to make Patrick McHenry, Speaker Pro Tem, is dead. Republicans are coming out of a multi-hour meeting saying that uh, Jordan's just going to try to go for it with another ballot. Uh, He wants to change the minds of 22 defectors. There's too much opposition. This is from Scott McFarland, uh, CBS's Capitol Hill reporter. Three-hour House GOP conference meeting, too much opposition. Uh, Scott Perry, the head of the House Freedom Caucus, and Marjorie Taylor Greene both blasting it, urging Jordan to try again. Congressman Ken Buck of Colorado says Jordan has more than just the 22 GOP defectors, and it could be 30 or 40 now. The number is continuing to grow. But Jordan refuses to step aside. Uh, he's at some point going to have to step aside and they're going to have to find someone. I guess they will wait until crisis is here before they do this. Um, listen, I, I, I got to be real honest with you. As much as I want Jordan, it looks bad when his number of people opposed to him keeps going up. And at some point, um, it's going to hurt conservatives. And most Americans, they're just going to want a Speaker of the House to be there so that they can get stuff done. And it's not going to be Jordan. Uh, Matt Gates poisoned the well too badly for it to be Jordan. 
877-973-7425. JW, you're going to be up next. Welcome. Hey, how's it going, Eric? Good. How are you? I'm not doing, I'm doing pretty good. So Great. the comment I got about your Leroy Jenkins is how I discovered it. <laughs> I was used to watch a show on the National Ge- Geographic channel called Paratroopers. Uh-huh. And it was about over in Afghanistan in the war. And whenever there was combat that was going on, the paratroopers would get put on alert. And their alert siren was the Leroy Jenkins. <laughs> That's what would alarm. That's and so fantastic. I just got to Googling around. I was like, what is that sound that they are making? And that's how I come across that video. Oh, that's fantastic. That That's such a great use for it, too. <laughs> yeah. It really is. It, it's one of the, the, the greatest clips of all time on the Internet. Yeah, absolutely. I'm glad you showed that. I had no idea, JW. Thank you so much. 877-973-7425. Uh, if y'all 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 missed it, you weren't paying attention. Uh, this this is this is what we're talking about. Do uh, all right, thumbs up, ready guys. Let's or- do this, Leroy Jenkins. <laughs> That's an alarm. I need to adopt that as like my home alarm sound. Leroy Jenkins. I don't wake the house up. All right, uh, Jan, you're going to be up next. Welcome to the show, Jan. Hi, Eric. I have a couple of questions. I don't know if this is a conspiracy theory or if it's fact, but um, everybody talks about election tampering. I'm just wondering if Russia and China and any other enemy that we might have have decided to intentionally now start uh, these wars and atrocities in order to uh, make Biden look like this compassionate hero uh, who will divvy up money whenever and wherever they want it and uh, weaken our country. I mean, they want to keep him in office, I think, just for that reason. So, I'm, um, you know, another four years would benefit, I think, any of our enemies. And the other question literally is how much money – even though it sounds stupid, does the U.S. have? I mean, how long can we keep doing this and giving everyone else money and still take care of ourselves, Eric? Oh, we're broke. Um, we, we, so our tax revenue actually set a record. It was about $5 trillion for the fiscal year, which was remarkable. Uh, but we're spending so much more than that, uh, which is a problem. Our, our debt service is becoming too burdensome. Uh, Jan, I, look, I, I, I can't dissuade people who think that they're doing this to help Biden, but I don't actually think that's what it is. I think they're doing this because they think, oh, we're stuck with Biden. Uh, I think that China, Russia, Iran, Hamas, Hezbollah, North Korea, all the bad guys, they think the United States is in disarray. I don't think they actually care whether it's Biden or Trump. They're looking at um, whoever, whether it's Biden or Trump, it'll be a deeply divisive person and we will keep fighting each other. Let's go back to the Russian stolen election stuff from 2016. Everybody misunderstands what it was all about. The Russians were trying uh, to engage in the American political process. It was not contrary to what the left believes. It was not to get Donald Trump elected. What the uh, the Mueller report clearly showed is what the Russians were doing was trying to get us to fight each other, to be distracted internally so that they could stretch their legs internationally. And it worked. The Russians were highly successful in getting everyone to, to be at each other's throat in this country. They don't care that Joe Biden's president. They're, they're not there to help Joe Biden get four more years uh, they they don't care at that level. What they care about is that the United States is so internally at each other's throat that we can't present a united front. Whether it's Trump or Biden, either is so divisive, it will keep us divided, and that will keep us from being able to stretch our legs on the international stage. They mean to subvert the United States as the world leader. They mean to push a communist regime as the gold standard for planet Earth, and they mean to do it by keeping us in internal turmoil. And playing both sides is the best way to keep internal turmoil in the United States. 
It's a dangerous game they're playing, but right now they're pretty successful at it. We in this country need to realize that there are forces bigger than us out there, and they mean us ill will. And those in this country that wish to stay home and be isolationists and sit back, that you're playing into their hands. If we, with bold leadership on the world stage, not act as the world's policemen, but act to help our friends and allies and act to be a country that's committed to free markets and free people, we actually win. Now, that means getting our hands dirty because we got to recognize, as you see in the Middle East right now, there are some people who do not want Western liberal democracy. They want authoritarian dictators. They want Hamas. The Palestinians, for Pete's sake, they put Hamas in power and left them there. They don't want liberal democracy, and it's naive of, of the of the neocons to think that we can impose our world order on everyone. Sometimes you got to get your hands dirty, and sometimes you got to you got to deal with uh, bad guys, but bad guys who are on your side. You got to be realist about it, and the realistic uh, view of this is not that they want Joe Biden to be leader of the United States; it's that they want us fighting each other so we don't fight them. And boy, Joe Biden, all the world says, did y'all hear some of this audio of him speaking on the plane on Air Force One headed home? Listen to some of this. Mr. President. I'm at the hospital, Mr. sir. People all over the region um, are upset about the hospital and don't necessarily believe uh, you or the Israelis that they didn't have anything to do with it. Do you have a message to the people in the streets right now? Well, I can understand why in this circumstance they wouldn't believe. I can understand that. And, but uh, I would not you notice I don't say things like that unless I have faith in the source from which I've gotten it. Our Defense Department says it's highly unlikely that it was Israelis, but if it had a different footprint and an intercepted some anyway. Yeah. And uh, so that's why, if you notice, I didn't say it first. I, didn't, I wanted to make sure that I knew. And look, I'm not suggesting that Hamas deliberately did it either. That's that old thing. Got to learn how to shoot straight. Not suggesting Hamas did it intentionally. They just need to learn to shoot straight. <laughs> he's not wrong. Let, let's just admit he's not wrong. Uh, now, it wasn't even Hamas. There's an offshoot group called the Islamic Jihad. They work with Hamas, but they are not Hamas. And it appears to be their rocket. Um, we now have visual confirmation. Visual confirmation that it was not an Israeli missile and the hospital did not blow up and 500 people did not die. In fact, a uh, European intelligence official says it was between 10 and 50 people. This was a uh, I-24 news conversation. Uh, just in the last few minutes, there's been uh, some news coming out of AFP where an uh, EU official um, has said that it is their understanding that the number of casualties uh, that, that occurred at the, the explosion in the hospital in Gaza, um, that this number may have been uh, widely exaggerated by Hamas. This is something that Israel has been saying for some time. Um, now, they're saying that they understand that the casualties are somewhere in the round of uh, a dozen to around 50. Uh, obviously, we don't have confirmation of this number, but it is far smaller than the hundreds that Hamas was talking about. Now, yesterday when uh, we attended a briefing given by the IDF about the, uh, the that this explosion, they refused to give us a number. So at the minute, this is uh, the first time that we've heard of, uh, of any specific casualty figure. 10 to 50. 10 to 50. Meanwhile, Rashida Tlaib is leaving on her social media that Israel did it. She was crying as she provoked a riot into the Capitol yesterday. Where's the FBI to round these people up and throw them away like the January 6th people? Continue to watch people think it's okay to bomb a hospital where children. You know what's so hard sometimes is watching those videos and and the people telling the kids don't cry and like let them cry and they're shaking and somebody you know this they keep telling them not to cry in arabic notice she wasn't she wasn't in tears over the israeli children butchered she wasn't in tears over the babies decapitated she denied it was true she wasn't in tears 
over the autistic Israeli girl dumped on the side of the road dead with her grandmother today. She's a monster. She's on the side of evil. She is on the side of evil, and she provoked a riot into the Cannon office building yesterday, and no one's held her accountable. Here's Tim Scott. When they thought it was Israel who shot the rocket, they were all up in flames. Everybody was coming out against them. The media, the New York Times, AP, and the squad. When they found out that maybe it wasn't, quiet as a church mouse. It's unbelievable how disgusting the reaction is when they think it's Israel. And then how amazingly quiet, no coverage, yeah. no denying. And frankly, I asked from the floor, delete the tweet. Delete, delete the it. tweet. We cannot have members of Congress being a part of the propaganda machine for Hamas. It's undeniably crazy. Amen. Tim Scott, he's right. They're right. Uh, it, it's, this is, it's remarkable that we have members of Congress who are standing on the side of evil, and Hamas is evil. They are peddling Hamas's propaganda. They won't shed a tear over the dead children of Israel, but they will shed a tear over the imagined dead among the Palestinians. They won't, they won't believe any truth claim Israel makes, but immediately believe and recirculate any lie Hamas makes. This is what we're dealing with. This is what we're dealing with. Some of these people ought to themselves be deported. Good grief. All right, let's move on. Let me tell you about Vision Computer. Vision Computer is a great computer company. I know this because we got one of their computers in my house. And thanks to them, I've never had to help my son with his computer. It, y'all, listen, I was the IT guy in the house. There's a computer problem. I got to fix it with his. Nope, he calls Vision. In less than 15 seconds, they answer the phone and they can fix the problems. And I said the other day, it really is the, the he keeps like, he gets worked up. He's playing video games. He's got a gaming PC and he bumps his desk and it it loosens the cable that, that has the monitor. And so he calls them. It's like, it's out again. They're like, did you check the cable? <laughs> He's finally learned to check the cable before he calls them. But they helped him get his email set up. They helped him with printer support. They helped him tie. We've got a Wi-Fi printer. They connected his computer. To I didn't have to do anything. They're great. They answered the phone. They diagnosed him and fixed him faster than a Google search. They can do the same for you. They can build your PC, desktop or laptop, and they can be your tech support for your home or your office. They can do this for all of your employees at your office, saving you the salary of an IT guy. Vision Computer can do it. And by the way, if you've got a bunch of computers but they're not Visions, for a small annual fee, they'll become your tech support too. All you do is go to visioncomputers.com. Any of you in the United States of America can take advantage of this. You go to visioncomputers.com. But hold up. You're not going to see the Eric Erickson special there. If you call them at 404-COMPUTE, ask about the Eric Erickson special. They're going to save you some solid money. Visioncomputers.com or 404-COMPUTE. Ask about the Eric Erickson special. Let Vision build your computers. Let Vision save you some money. Let them be your IT department. Breaking news, the USS Kearney in the Red Sea has intercepted multiple projectiles fired by Iranian-backed Islamic uh, terrorists out of Yemen, the Houthi militants. Uh, it's not clear if the missiles were fired at the ship, but that appears to be most likely. There were three missiles, two to three missiles, fired, it appears, at the direction of the ship. Uh, the USS Kearney was able to take them out before impact on the ship. Uh, this is happening now. The USS Kearney uh, made its way through the Suez Canal into the Red Sea on Wednesday uh, to ensure maritime stability in the area has come under uh, fire from Iranian-backed terror groups in Yemen that fired appear apparently two to three missiles at the ship. This is happening right now. This news just breaking. The uh, situation continues to disintegrate in the Middle East. You know, we, we've got uh, bases there. We've even got a small base uh, on the edge of the Syrian-Iraq border. It's come under drone attack in the past few hours. We've got bases in Kuwait and the United Arab Emirates. We have a big air base in the United Arab Emirates where they remain uh, on our side. However, Joe Biden has done a very good job in the last two years of alienating our friends in the Middle East from the Saudis to the UAE. And part of that has to do with Joe Biden's deal with Iran and trying to negotiate with Iran. By the way, uh, the uh, Biden administration saying they are not going to purge from the ranks the Iranian spies. They say that 
They're not actually spies, and they're not going to give up their classified security clearance either. What a bunch of insanity. We got people who are on the side of Iran working in the Defense Department at the upper levels with security clearance, and the Biden administration is leaving them in place. This really is irresponsible behavior by the Biden administration. They're also going to give money to Gaza. Where do you think that money is going to go? Also, having decided to pull back the $6 billion to Iran, turns out now they moved it into an account in Qatar, and the Qataris are not releasing the money back to the original account. That's right. The Qataris are keeping the money in Qatar. Hmm, why? All of this was predictable. All of this was so predictable. The Biden administration is just incompetent when it comes to foreign policy. A major uh, employee of the State Department has resigned today, uh, saying that his views on, on Palestine are not being respected in the administration. That's good, at least. The, uh, the person who was at the, in charge of asylum, the Palestinian who championed Hamas's attacks, has been suspended at the Department of Homeland Security. Essentially, she's getting a paid vacation, hoping that this thing cools over. But at least it's good to see some of these people are being purged. But these Iranians or Iranian sympathizers in the administration that they're not being purged is just insane. So much happening right now. Let me review, by the way, all the breaking news here here at the end of the show. One, Sidney Powell has pled guilty in Georgia to six misdemeanors related to election interference and agreed to testify against the other defendants, including Donald Trump, in that case. That's breaking news number one. Breaking news number two. Uh, Jim Jordan can't get the votes to be speaker, is refusing to walk away, and has now killed the deal to allow Patrick McHenry to serve with the powers of speaker. Jim Jordan says he's going to try for another vote. The vote against him is expected to go up. There could be 55 Republicans opposed to Jim Jordan for Speaker of the House. Uh, More breaking news. Uh, Israel preparing its ground invasion. The death toll at the hospital in Gaza appears to be 10 to 50 now, not 500. And the USS, uh, what's the name of the ship now? The USS Kearney has come under fire by Iranian-backed militants uh, who fired missiles out of Yemen towards the ship. Lots happening. I'll keep you up to date online and talk to you more tomorrow. Okay, round two. Name something that's not boring. A laundry? Ooh, a book club. Computer solitaire, huh? Ah, oh, sorry. We were looking for Chumba Casino. That's right. Chumbacasino.com has over 100 casino-style games. Join today and play for free for your chance to redeem some serious prizes. Chumbacasino.com. No purchase necessary. Forward, prohibited by law. 18 plus. Terms and conditions apply. See website for details.